Okay, um, I'm going to begin by asking you two to state your names, and then after that I'm going to ask you about when you were at the VA and under what conditions. Okay, so, young lady on my right, would you tell us your name? I'm Margaret Susan. My dear? Oh, I'm a slow <laughs> thinker here. I was in nurses training Joyce Shuffle Jacob. Okay, Margaret, when were you at the VA, and would you relate your experience to us? Okay, I was there in 1956, and that was the beginning of my junior year. Um, I was on a different track from most everybody else in my class, because I was a degree student. And so there was one classmate of mine that, and I that went uh, in the fall of 1956, so I was a brand new junior. So I'd only had a year of s school by that time. Um, The VA was a big, scary place for me. Um, I was 20, actually, because I'd had two years of college before I started nursing school. But um, I was a very young 20. I was probably 15, 20. And um, going out to the VA was a very scary experience for me. Um, I was assigned to 208, which was sort of like Gwen's um, unit. It was a uh, chronic, uh, long-term, very catatonic type patients, uh, very little interaction. I think the patient that I was assigned to work with probably never said more than ten words to me in the three months I was there. So you were assigned one patient? Yeah, we, that, as I remember it, um, remember this is 54 years ago, so I think I had just one patient because I, I seem to remember that I had to write papers for my teacher um, about interaction and progress and that sort of thing. So you did record your findings and report them back to someone? I'm sure we did. I, I'm pretty confident of that. I don't remember any physician interaction, um, nor nursing staff. The orderlies were helpful protective, because uh, there were times when there were scuffles on the unit that uh, were scary, again for me, because I had never experienced anything like that. What kind of scuffles? Oh, well, patients would get into it with each other, um, and I don't know if that was over cigarettes or candy bars or whatever it was, but, uh, or playing cards, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but there would be, you know, a little negative interaction between patients on, at times. And the orderlies were always kind of quick to make sure the nursing students that were in the unit at the time were safeguarded. So. Did you, um, you work independently then, you didn't go with other students um, to the VA, like on a rotation, like when and Jean went together? Well, I had one other student from California Hospital in my class that went with me. But she was assigned to a different unit, um, and I don't know where she was. I don't recall now. There was a woman's unit at the time, and I think that was 210, if I'm not right. It was 205, 208, 210, 257, Seven. and maybe 256. Um, there were several units that, you know, students were kind of distributed to. and. Um, I think most of those buildings are empty right now. Probably. I, I would hope so, because they were not, they, they weren't therapeutic places to be, you know, for, for the patients. In what way? I think they were just uh, big barns that were housing livestock, quote unquote. You know, they were just there. Uh, I don't think there was a lot of therapy going on. I did. Um, have opportunity, if, that, if you want to call it that, to observe um, electroshock therapy. What was and, that? Oh. Tell me what that is and what it entailed, as though I've never known what that was. Well, um, the patient is taken into a unit where, into a like a treatment room or something like that. They're, they are strapped down to a table, treatment table. Um, and they are 
attached to electrodes and they are given electroshock therapy, which electricity is run through their body, through their brain. And it is um, intended to quiet uh, nerve activity, uh, to kind of be a sedation sort of thing um, that's not just uh, like a medication sedation, which is short term, but more long term, you know, you know maybe over weeks um, effect. Um, I didn't see patients afterwards, so I wouldn't, I mean, I don't remember which patients might have been treated that way. I just remember being um, in taken in to watch the procedure being done. Do you remember having an opinion on it? Scared to death. Very frightening. Very, it, it worried worried me, it frightened me to see a patient literally seize, I mean, have like an epileptic seizure because that's what happens, you know, everything, they go stiff and, and all. And uh, that, I mean, I never like to see a seizure anyway, so that really frightened me. To induce one. Yeah. They used uh, insulin uh, shock therapy as well, but I don't, that may have been more historical, may have been earlier in therapeutics than it was, but it was electroshock that I saw, I'm sure of that. I'm going to turn to Joyce, but I will get back to you, Margaret, so don't relax. Hmm. Joyce, uh, tell me about your experience at the VA. Um, I went in July of 59, and it was probably my junior year too, Margaret, when I went. And it's a three-month affiliation, so my issue, though, was my father had passed away in uh, February of that year, and I grew up in West L.A., so my stepmother preferred me to stay at home because she was re uh, having cancer treatments for breast cancer, and I had a brother and sister that were half-brother and sister that were six and four, so I came home every day after um, class and um, took that bus every day. <laughs> so it was kind of like not knowing the people that well. I do know there were people in my class and California Hospital always did their assignments in alphabetical order, so I'm sure that um, my roommate Charlene Strehon was there, but I don't remember that much. I was assigned to Ward 205 maximum security, and the main things I remember were the keys. I still struggle with keys today, and we had this big chain of keys. Keys to get in the elevator, key to run the elevator, key to get through three doors, I think. It was just keys oh. everywhere. I could not take the keys. <laughs> they struggled with me. And I always remember this because Bobby Darren song, um, Mac the, Mac the Knight was mm -hmm. popular then. And for some reason, it was playing all the time, too. They played that song there. It was a big ward. They were painted green, the institutional mm -hmm. green. Um, the windows are barred. They have mm -hmm. seats around. And um, I do remember the catatonic patients, and they kind of told us that we should imitate them. That would make them more comfortable if somebody was with them. I don't know why I was in this silly position to do this. But I do remember sitting on the bench with this window back of me and one of the patients came and hit, broke the glass right beside me. I really was not worried. I don't know, I didn't have that fear. The orderlies were right there. I never feared the patients that much. I just never felt uncomfortable. I didn't like the behaviors of the smoking. And I do remember carrying matches because um, they could not and they were chain smokers, and their fingers were just yellow from smoking. Um, and they wanted you to line them up. I was trying to light that darn match because I don't like fire, so I'm sitting there trying to light the matches for them, you know. Sometimes I think I gave it to them to even start it. But they played cards. I remember the cards. We went on trips. Uh, we went to the beach. Uh, we watched movies at the theater. We played... Um, baseball because I cannot play baseball and they were so kind to me to try and hit the ball I could not hit the ball the only thing I did that was any athletic because I'm not athletic at all with these granddaughters that I've got um, horseshoes they were trying to teach me I threw it so hard it went over the fence they were like so hard 
You can't hit the ball, but this horseshoe went over the fence. And they had to get the guards to go get this horseshoe because it's way over in that junkyard or something. So there were probably good times there. I do remember it. The sad parts, um, they did use the straight jackets. Uh, I did not like that. Um, there was one man that kept getting out all the time. Big, heavy set Asian man. And they seemed to know. He, I don't know how he could always get up. And they'd always find him in LA and he'd jump on the top of cars and crash him down. So they'd always bring him back. I mean, it was like two or three times while I was there in those three months. He was just kind of back and forth. And they kind of sedate him when he come back and kept him in a quiet room. And then before I know he's out again. I'm with Margaret. I did have the assignment of, and I thought I felt it was an assignment to go watch mm -hmm. because oh, yes. it was not my choice. No, it wasn't my choice either. Uh, to watch the electric shot. I resented it. I hated every minute. I felt that was not good medical care. I'm a strong believer in what's right and wrong. It's like kids taking a lot of medicine today. I'm not into that. I just felt the electrical shots were the same way. And they, these men in the gurneys would beg, beg you not to go in there. Please don't let me go in there. I don't want to go in there. You know, I just, I think I had to go twice. I just did not like it. I'm like Margaret. I remember doing assignments. I come home and do assignments to bring back. I do not remember the doctors talking to us or supervision or even the nurses, to be honest. So it was a classroom situation only. And I think it's also a learning experience on mental health. I don't think people understood some of it. Um, for some reason, the first floor, the, we were on the second floor because of this elevator situation. The first floor was a quieter ward, and I just remember going in at one time, and they felt there was a lot of men there that had shrapnel wounds in their head, so there was brain damage, or it could have been surgery like um, talking about. I re was impressed that there were people there from the Spanish-American War. I was impressed. Mm -hmm by the history of it. See, I've been in history ever since. I was impressed by um, the fact that these people wanted to talk to you. They did talk to you then about their things. I don't think I was taking it in. Now I feel bad that I missed that history, so to speak, or that involvement with them. But I do remember they did want to talk to you. So out of kindness, I guess, I listened, but not cannot give you any feedback. 